Good morning, everyone. This has been a long time since I've been able to do this because I've had to do a whole bunch of work outside of Cody's shop. Cody has been really doing a lot of work. Uh, looks like they got an extra wastegate done. Hopefully we can talk about that. Brian's actually here wiring some stuff for the supercar systems car. And Cody said he really wanted to talk about something though before he goes to a meeting. He's actually got a CAD meeting with Nathan. So let's go see what he wants to talk about because I heard it's probably not good news. Hello, sir. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hate cars. <laughs> yeah? What's going on? So, you know, a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see. So, I had the oil pan off. Um, I had something hooked up wrong with the crankcase the whole time. Thankfully, nothing terminal. Uh, with the dry sump system, there's the oil return that, that returns oil from the sump up to the tank. And then there's an uh, actual air oil separator, which basically sucks air out of the crankcase. Mm -hmm. That trying to push it into the bottom of the turbo. So that was uh, an ID10 T code on my, on my end. But my defense, there were no instructions anywhere, not even on uh, Dally's site. No. Um, I, I didn't know it was wrong until I talked to Steve Morris about it. And I had no guidance from them either. So I had to drill a hole in the side of the block, tap it for the oil drain, and then I ran things properly on that side. So if you go over there, you'll see things look a little more normal than they did before. Uh, so that's ready to go, and I was doing all this in preparation for another test this week. Uh, I'm flying out to L.A. midweek, so I was trying to get the car down to M1 at John's, John's place. Um, I started up, and didn't start. Oh yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, right, so here's the fuel line. It's not hooked up. I just have the wires. That's not how they were. They're just temporarily there. Yeah, there's the outlet to the pump. Something's not spinning somewhere. So I'm assuming the pump stripped teeth off. I don't know. It's dead. So I've already had it out. It's nothing. It looks fine. It's not like it's rusted or corroded or anything. It looks great. So who knows? Dead pump. So we're dead in the water. Do we get another one? Second wastegate's on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kevin came over last night and helped me put some heat shielding on and all that. So, I mean, we're, we were ready to test. So, uh, no point in putting the body back on or anything until until it runs again. Yeah. I guess I deal with it when I get back. I'll try to get a pump on the way while I'm gone. And when I get back, I can toss it in. Uh, with the second wastegate. So, on the dyno previously at low boost, it was starting to get traction. So, we had a couple runs and then it would just light it off. I suspect it was starting to boost creep. And that's why it would just light it off because you're at 800 horsepower and then all of a sudden it shoots to nine or whatever and it'll just go nuts. I'm going to get this back on the dyno and see if I can get it to stay down at six pounds of boost and see if we can get some kind of dyno reading. Um, just the systems test, test the crankcase, make sure it's not blowing oil everywhere. So that'll be next week. I was about to say, so you're going to LA to fix some carbon stuff on what was it you were telling me? Um, going to see Mueller eyes, it's John Mueller. So they run uh, KTM Expos, the GT4 cars, I believe. Oh, cool. So they've got, a, uh, they've got one car, if not two, that has, that they've sustained some damage and crashes. So go fix them. Have, maybe you have a decent time in LA, you know? Not really. I just want to work and get home. <laughs> I want to go fishing. It's August. We've got a month of fishing left. Yeah, I know. It's, you know, summer's over. Like, we already got leaves changing here, so... You know, it's, but work it's is weird. work. Yeah. Well, it's super cool to see the progress on this. Unfortunately, I know the fuel pump issue kind of sets us back from testing. But hopefully, like you said, you can get that on the way while you're out and about. And uh, now we're off to you're off to do a CAD meeting with Nate. Nathan? Yeah, we're gonna design. We're gonna start the design on the uprights with Nathan today. Sweet. So, um, yeah, there, there'll be other things. You'll see that in the in the club. Yeah, cool. So, we're gonna head over there and uh, hopefully we can see some really cool stuff, some behind the scenes stuff. And uh, he's he's got a really cool facility. I know you've seen it on camera before a couple times, but I'm excited to see how this is gonna go. So we're gonna be there in three, two, one. Nate's office. So we're redesigning the uprights and we just now dropped this. In. Ah, so now you see. So we're doing a, a massive wheel bearing. 
this is 105 millimeters right here, the wheel bearing sits there, and there's one on the outside. <coughs> so, and it's what, 130 millimeter gap? Yes. No, 150. So yeah, they're right. eight inches apart. See, so that's how much lateral load we're going to have on this upright. Wow. And <coughs> I think it's actually going to end up being wider than what was in there with the pallet top stuff. Really? Pallet top stuff is great. They just use an off the shelf wheel bearing, yeah. which is heavy by nature. But, so now you see, we're going to have to like build this body and then like flare it out, you know what I mean? So we just drop this in, bearing design. It's a 52 millimeter wheel nut instead of 18, instead of 18 millimeters. So it's going to drop in with the same offsets and everything. And we got to check, but I think we can do a slight tweak to the HREs and reuse the HREs too. Yeah. Even though Nathan wants to build wheels, but <laughs> I don't know if I want to pay for that. So, I was going to say, I, I bet his machining bill's not cheap. No. Cheaper than HRE's bill. Yeah, well, yeah, it would be cheaper than HRE's bill. But, would it really? Yeah, well, <laughs> on, on the Nathan uh, sponsorship uh, logo, logo system, yes. <laughs> so well, That's super cool to see. But so, yeah, we're just sitting down. I mean, I know what I want, but I don't know how to do it in CAD. Nathan knows how to do CAD, but he needs to know what the heck I want. So, But you can see the diff, too. So that's a front diff. By the way, that's going to move 120 millimeters offside. Yeah. Okay. So working with SATA on that, and I think we're doing another gearbox. Yeah. A new gearbox. Finish your thought and open up the gearbox. So John needs a gearbox for his Ultima Can Am. Yep. Uh, he doesn't want to put his supercar systems in there because it's just way overbuilt for what he's doing. Yep. We have a perfect gearbox for his can -Am. And everything. Shift system, all of it. And rear suspension and rockers. So yeah. basically we're going to back half his Ultima Can-Am. Can -Am. We're going to cut it off, roll up the back of the existing NV8, and make it fit. <laughs> Are you serious? So we're doing that. Okay. And that's what we're using. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is a Sadev. This is Sadev's new SLR90, which has integrated rockers. Which, by the way, we, we're gonna probably design your rockers. Or we can hog. I can have these hogged out to 40 mil. I think they're 32 ID right now. So I can confirm with them that it'd be strong enough. But this is a new SLR90, uh, fully integrated stress member. Oddly enough. This spacing right here has been like five millimeters of what we already have on our existing gearbox. Oh wow! <laughs> so the design basis is solid there. The thing we're doing on this one, the reason I want to use this one, look how skinny the back of the box is right here. Oh wow! Yeah. That's off. That's down. So the rear diffuser stays really narrow. With uh, the SL90 box that we currently have, we would have to have a transfer case off the back, and we would destroy any diffuser. Uh, boat shape at the back. On this box, they want to go out the, they want to do a, uh, this is the output shaft. Okay. They want to do a drop gear right here through the side of the case and forward. Gotcha. So we retain the back of the box, we retain the diffuser, and weight balance is better too because you've got drop gears and all that coming out right here. <clears throat> and then the drive shaft shoots forward in the car. So that's wild. And oddly enough, this gearbox is 4,000 euro cheaper than the base SL90 box, just because this is <clears throat> it's more cast, robust, cheaper construction. But it's fine. It's the same gear set. Uh, this gear, but this gearbox held up great to what we're doing now. So yeah. we know this one's going to hold up, and if not better, because the case is that much stronger. That's wild. And it's lighter. Is, I was, that's like, what I was curious. It's like 15 it's lighter. kilograms lighter. Which sorry for all you uh, <clears throat> Americans. Yeah, it's like 35 pounds lighter than... That's wild. So by the time you had all the drive, we're going to have no additional weight than what we have now. Plus, with the integrated rockers, we don't have to have the 30-pound chassis tubes that we have now for the rockers. Yeah. So, I'm going to keep Nathan busy because uh, we, we're designing new uprights, doing all that. And then, I don't know if you're really going to be involved with the gearbox, but say that will be. They're doing a lot of stuff. So, uh, I know Sebastian wanted to do... New rockers because the wheel mo the wheel ratio wasn't what they wanted the F1 guys yeah. so now would be the time to redo that um, 
Plus, if John's buying the whole reader of this car, we have to build the rockers anyway. So yeah. this would be that time. So I remember this, guys. There were a few of us while we were still in the garage who we were like, hey, you're not going to completely redesign your car, right? Right? And we were all joking and laughing. He wasn't laughing, and now I see why. But it'll be really cool. Obviously, it's super cool to see what Nate's able to do here, especially since he is a huge, huge, huge proponent of him being able to do everything. So super cool to see. So maybe we can check some other things out, and we'll keep you updated. And just like that, we're back at the shop, and we've got Evan. Hey because they're going to be cutting a hole. Two holes? One. One just hole. One hole into his hood. Why, why, are they, why are you cutting a hole, Evan? Uh, <laughs> yeah, why, Evan? <laughs> So last year we were at spring kickoff with my silver car. Yep. And I was having a massive overheating issue. Cody was like, well, we definitely need to vent the hood. And I'm like, yes, I know, but I don't really think it's that crucial at this point in time. Well, well what happened was. so I completely like revamped the entire cooling system. With, well, it's a new car now too. Yeah. Yeah. So completely revamped the entire cooling system. Uh, did a swirl pot, uh, new thermostat, new radiator and I'm still overheating. So I did a test at Honda Meet and I took the front splitter off and I saw, I think like a 20 degree drop in temperature. Really? So that means that all the hot air radiator is radiating is getting stuck uh, basically between the engine block and the radiator and there's nowhere for it to evacuate. Gotcha. So that's where we're gonna cut the hood, do a hood vent. All right. So, I mean, so again, me being really done with all this stuff, you know, you see like certain vent styles where it comes through and it's got like ripples to like kind of like really force the air to get out in a certain way. All right. What are you guys doing with this? So what we're going to do, and I'm pretty sure, just going to cut. Cut and fold. Cut, yep, cut, fold, and then we're going to box, uh, fold, basically. We're going to box it in so we'll get the shape that we want. And then, yeah. Gotcha. What we're going to try to do, I think, we're gonna try to get the boxing portion close to the radiator as we can, but it's pretty freaking tight. Yeah. Between the intake manifold and the, the radiator. Yeah, so I'm trying to cut the hood to where it's right here, literally, right yeah. at the front of this. Gotcha. Because the intake manifold is gonna be a pretty sharp thing. Yeah. And you'll eventually wanna do some kind of shroud off. Yep. Yeah. So even simple sheet metal. Do yeah, that's the next plan is to actually do some someday we can do that event. carpet again, and that's kind of my plan too. Is I want to when I say I when I say I, I mean Evan's gonna pull a mold out of off this hood this winter. We'll do we'll go through and do some more fancy stuff with clay work and stuff. But yeah, so I don't have a carbon oh, hood, and then if someone else wants a hood, we can build another hood. Sweet. So all right, we'll let you guys get to it, and we'll get to some B-roll and see how this thing's done. So is there a way to hold? I guess okay. Never mind. We're gonna find out. A uh, little bit lower. I'm short. Don't. So hold it right there. I'm gonna be pushing on it. Don't let it. Okay. There you go. Sweet. Something like that. I mean, well. Probably do a little more actually. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. All right, sir, what do you think? I mean, I think it looks pretty good, but I don't well, really- Well, I'll tell you one thing. It <laughs> definitely beats a $1,400 hood that already has a vent integrated into it. Yeah, oh yeah, I bet. Thing is, is you can't find any like vented hoods right now because of just COVID and everything's so backlogged. Yeah. So. We make our own. See, that's so wild too to think. It's fourteen hundred dollars for one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go and buy like a VIS Invader style hood. I think that's probably like twelve hundred bucks shipped to you. Jeez. Uh, I'd have to go and start cutting. You know, cut the 
openings out for the arrow catches and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Well, that's cool. Yeah, well, yeah that, it's awesome to see. A few moments later. Yep. Oh God. That's hot. <laughs> How do you guys kill flies? Underneath your race car. Not like a demolition derby. Hope we got nothing flammable. Look at that! So I welded it. A couple little warps, but that's okay. Evan said he still had to do some stuff to the hood anyway, right? Yeah. So that's what it looks like underneath. Well, hold on, let me uh let me make it a little brighter for the people to see. Right in, you see a little tiny weld, that's actually kind of proud of that. Of course, it's hidden, so. And then, uh, you know, here you can see kind of the welds. Let me get on this side here. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. And this is, uh, I'm gonna let Evan drill holes when he's done painting or whatever he's doing. This uh, aluminum is gurney flat. Creates a low pressure behind here, so it actually sucks air out. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So. Heck yeah. I'm excited to see, like I said, I'm really curious to see what the difference is. I know like he said, he's done the test with and without the splitter, but I'm really curious to see what it is because you got a lot of feedback on your Facebook post about this. No, I know. So. I'm, I'm betting it's gonna do, yeah, he'll be, he'll probably do better than without the splitter on it, so. Yeah. He'll need to do some ducting. If he does some, even without the ducting, I think it's gonna be better. So, yeah, he'll be, he'll be fine with us. Yeah. So. so yet again, yet again, he needs to listen to, I guess, I don't want to say Uncle Cody, but I mean, a lot of stuff I tell him he does later. <laughs> that. I mean, basically, it's like Chris's track dad. You're pretty. I'm pretty much he is the Uncle Buck in the automotive world, but in the best way possible. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna say Uncle Cody. So, yep. Sweet. So he's gonna pick this up, and then we get to weld on Adam's ramp truck all night. So oh that's, yeah. That's tonight's fun. So. He's got a lot going on with that. I've got to actually go do a photo shoot. So we're going to end the episode here. So thank you guys always for watching, sharing, subscribing. I mean, we're still constantly getting messages from everyone seeing the video. So thank you again as always. Hopefully in the next couple of videos, I can have an update on some merch stuff. Tim and I have been brainstorming and talking to a few companies. So really excited about that. And other than that, he's going to be off to, whoop, there we go. He's going to be off to LA for a couple of days doing some carbon fiber work. So it might be a little bit before you see another episode, but we want to get this out to you. So uh, yeah, enjoy and we'll see you in the next one.